This morning I thought I'd sit outside, watch the birds, and go over a simple question. Actually, it's not just a question. It's kind of um, where there's a will, there's a way, and I love it. Michelle Stout wrote to me. She said, hi, Robbie. I just wanted to say you bring such hope to me. In this hard times we are living, you make me feel like everything will be all right. Shortage of food, fertilizer, soil, whatever happens, we can be self-sufficient. I live in Lake Tahoe at 7,000 feet, but I have found ways to be as self-sufficient as I can. I have a pretty decent sized greenhouse on my deck with a couple of heaters. And when it was 10 degrees outside, I was picking tomatoes. That got to me right away because I'll tell you a story on that. I'm looking now to grow strawberries. So wanted to ask you if you could make a video about that, which I think I did. What kind of strawberries do you grow? Do they grow year round? How do you feed them? Thank you so much. You know, that was really interesting on the tomatoes. And just thinking about how you can do things. That's what gets me so excited. Aren't the birds cool? I just love coming out here and just taking a break in the morning and starting my day this way. The thing is, I do feel that most of us can do almost anything if we really want to. A lot of it is we really don't want to. Or we don't want to put the effort out because the full interest is not there. That's what the problem is. The full interest. When you're really interested, you're going to make it happen. I met somebody that lives up at Big Bear. Now, that also was high and it was full of snow. It was in the winter. The guy was telling me he had tomatoes growing everywhere. I said, outside? Oh, yeah. He said, outside. We planted them in the spring and... They grew all summer and into the fall, and he said, we've got tomatoes still growing. I said, aren't you under snow or covered in snow? He goes, oh, yeah, we have snow. But he said he stapled some plastic sheeting, clear plastic sheeting, onto his house because the tomatoes were up against the house, and he draped it over the tomatoes. And the heat from the house, think of it, stucco, even wood, the heat from the house gave enough warmth to his tomatoes that even though there was snow inches from the tomatoes, the plants, he still had tomatoes growing all winter long. He created a greenhouse up against his house. And we've talked about this with block walls and stucco, how there are microclimates all over the property. You can walk around. I'll do it one day with you and I'll show you. There are microclimates everywhere. You can move over two feet and find a different climate than there is two feet on the other side. So I was just fascinated how she got a greenhouse and she was growing tomatoes. And it just, like I said, it just made me think of it. As far as the strawberries, I have done a strawberry tower and I just fixed my strawberry tower up. I like seascape. Now, they don't throw tons of strawberries. But what I like about the seascape strawberries is they can, especially in Southern California, or she's got a greenhouse in her greenhouse, they can grow and produce strawberries almost all year. I've even had some strawberries in the winter. They keep throwing little bits here and there. And, and they're nice and they're sweet strawberries. A lot of the other varieties, they really throw most of their strawberries in June. And then you get a trickle here and there. And then eventually they just stop. So I like Seascape. I will say I bought some online and I knew that they weren't Seascape when I planted them. So I was a little disappointed because I bought them last year. And how did I know? My Seascape that I've been growing for years do not produce runners. Where your other varieties of strawberries produce runners. Mine did not. So that's how I knew that they sent me something else. So I have no idea what they sent me. So we'll see what happens. Seascape seem to divide. Mine have always divided. They'll kind of get a little, like a baby plant, like banana plants do and stuff. Another plant will pop up right next to it. But they don't generally, at least mine, the ones I've been dealing with for years, they don't send out the long runners. So it's a different plant. It grows different than a lot of the other varieties. But that's just me. I mean, you can 
grow any strawberries you want. You'll probably get a strawberry here and there, but that's my opinion on strawberries, the seascape. Somebody else wrote to me and said, totes don't work. They got some totes, they set up cantaloupe, and their cantaloupe grew, looked skimpy, had a few flowers, died, started to die back, and the ants attacked it. Well, what happened was the plant wasn't doing well. It was starting to rot out, and the ants found it and went in there and attacked it. This is what nature does. It sends in the insects, and the insects go there to get rid of it, to return the plant back to earth, to turn it back in the soil. I cannot grow cantaloupe here where I live in Southern California. Even though we're not on the coast and we're a little bit up, you've seen how we're a little bit up, we're too cool at night. So I have tried and we end up with skimpy plants and little fruit, if we're lucky, that go nowhere. You, they're not edible. So cantaloupe doesn't do good for me. So why would I continue to try to grow cantaloupe? I grow watermelon, the little sugar babies. Boy, we can grow a ton of those. I like the Korean melons, a little bit of a struggle, but they do better in the fall because we have warmer nights later on in the summer. So you've got to kind of figure out what your climate is and what's going to grow good for you. And experiment, but don't throw in the towel because you tried something like cantaloupe and it didn't work. Try something else. Try some other, you know, things like watermelon. Try some squash. There's certain plants that no matter what will not grow in your climate unless you create a microclimate. That's why I'm working on my wall garden because that's going to be a microclimate as well with that great big wall producing all that heat later on in the winter. Who knows if I put a little more effort into it, what I could grow. With that, have a wonderful day and don't forget to eat what you grow. I don't want to talk too loud and disturb the birds, but I thought I'd just sit out here and chit chat over a few questions and now I better get my day going. Bye-bye. That's lettuce, peanuts, small to medium sunflower, that's a pigeon mix, and then that is a parakeet mix with canary seed and everything in it. And that's what goes into all these feeders. As you see, they love their sunflower.